worldwide health crisis has given rise to economic upheaval. No one can predict the new future of manufacturing, but business as usual does not appear likely. In the meantime, factories and plants are scrambling to increase agility while navigating unorthodox working conditions and disrupted supply chains. Human health and safety of workers is also emerging as a bigger than ever priority. Will your organization be flexible enough to adapt to these changes? What needs to be reinvented? How can we best leverage the assets we already have in place? Let me introduce you to our guests who find themselves in the middle of these recent marketplace changes and who are ready to share their unique perspectives. First, we have Mike Jamison. Mike is global president of the consumer packaged goods segment at Schneider Electric. He leads Schneider's global sales and marketing efforts across the food and beverage, life sciences and household and personal care industries. Mike joined Schneider Electric in 2015, having previously held positions at Prolite, Rockwell Automation and Crown Cork and Seal. He helps manufacturers and equipment suppliers achieve greater operational efficiency and sustainability. Our second guest is Vicki Pearson. Vicki works as a global solutions architect on the Schneider Electric consumer packaged goods team. Vicki joined Schneider Electric in 2009 and currently specializes in offering solutions to life science industry customers. The first question goes out to Mike. The context of manufacturing is now changing almost on a daily basis. COVID has placed demands on many businesses in ways we have never seen before. Getting back up and running following the lockdown represents an immediate challenge. How are manufacturers being impacted, Mike? Well, well thank you, Dennis, for the introduction. And uh, yeah, well, let me start. W without a doubt, uh, I think it's fair to say that your know, COVID has certainly changed the context of manufacturing as we know it. Um, I think we've seen a wave initially within the factories getting restarted has presented immediate challenges with regards to the workforce. Uh, social distancing requirements ha has meant reduced personnel on the plant floor, uh, which has often resulted in a reduced output within the plant as well, or, or sometimes it even has been an inability to, to maintain and service the plant, uh, often due to limitations of being able to even get an access for the expert onto the plant to, to fix assets if they, if they fail. Um, and on top of this with the workforce, ensuring that you get the workforce back in and it's done in a, a clean and safe working environment, often with new standard operating procedures as well that have had to be put in place, uh, with a workforce that needs to quickly learn how to operate differently in that environment, it's been a steep learning curve for many of the manufacturers. So, so restarting and keeping the plants running while while maximising the efficiency of the workforce and the existing assets within the plant has become a critical focus. Uh, similarly, what we've seen as well within the manufacturers is that capital investments that may have been underway uh, in many cases have been deferred uh, uh, due to disruptions in the supply chain or, or just access to the plant and the equipment. Uh, means then that there's been a, a far larger focus that has been placed on to business continuity within the plants and, and keeping these aging or, or problematic assets running. So, so manufacturers have, have suddenly been forced to do more with what they have in place, and, and ma in many cases with less people and with remote, remote support from experts in many cases as well. And, and, and finally, on, on top of this, Dennis, uh, we've seen the supply chain. You know, the supply chain has, has been disrupted as well. It's dynamically changing, whether it be raw material availability or the downstream market access. Uh, and managing your inventory levels uh, across this uh, this volatile supply chain as well. This has made the role of the production planners extremely challenging as well within the manufacturers. Uh, of course, there are things that, that, that may be similar to, to pre-COVID for the manufacturers as well. It's not it's not all new, but there's a, a lot of similarities as well. But, but during the, the, the COVID period and, and indeed post-COVID, uh, the, the, these phases are accelerating the need for the manufacturers to free up money to do investments which are going to enable them to quickly adapt to these disrupted supply chains that they've been seeing, uh, increasing the flexibility and the agility of their assets 
uh, and to optimize their, their and maintain efficiencies in their pro, pro, uh, productivity uh, so that they can ensure business continuity going forward. Okay, so back to you, Dennis. Thank you. Uh, Vicky, people, safety, and business continuity are two main concerns today. Can you share some examples of how certain manufacturers are managing to shift production and minimize disruption with the equipment they currently have in place? Yes. Firstly, enabling the workforce with digital tools to empower them and by using analytics to help with quicker decision making. For asset performance, being able to collect data and predict performance of machines and equipment. And for uptime, the ability to remotely support and gain access to spare parts. With supply chain disruption, the ability to adapt on the fly without having to stop. So companies who were fortunate enough uh, to digitize and automate parts of their operations before the crisis hit are in a much better position to adapt quickly. In this sense, we are seeing machine builders and the systems integrators. They're aggressively adopting digital tools, which makes it much easier for end users to adjust to the new normal. OEMs are performing remote monitoring and uh, remote service of their machines and their equipments. And as an example, an Indianesian machine builder for coffee roasters leverage this type of technology in their machines with real time data on machine status. And this approach is quantitatively demonstrated a 50 percent reduction reduction in maintenance times for their equipment, which is a benefit ultimately passed on to their customers. Systems integrators are actually performing the remote commissioning of the plants. Engineers remotely commissioning breweries right now around the world. It's really fascinating stuff. And we have proven across multiple settings and industries that this formula works. Mike, people are obviously being impacted in a major way. How will manufacturing change for them? So, yeah, I, I think if you look in uh, consumer goods, you know, food and beverage, you know, we talk, we've been talking about digitization and automation, but, you know, going forward, still people will continue to be the main asset for industry. Uh, that's not going to change. However, the environment that they're working within will. Uh, we need to ensure it's safe, and obviously socially distanced, as, as, as well as being more flexible and adaptable to the changes that may come in the future, because there, there will be more changes that, you know, that, that are going to come ahead of us. Um, just some examples, you know, if you look at some industries that have been struggling with their workforce uh, due to COVID, for example, the US meat industry, where the, the workforce simply could not enter the plant. Uh, they'll have to invest in technologies that allow them to change how that workforce is deployed uh, to be able to continue to run their business. Uh, so the technologies will need to be deployed that support social distancing whilst not impacting the plant productivity as well. So a, an example I could share is, is, and Vicky alluded to this earlier, is the, the use of tablets with things like augmented reality, which allow non-experts inside the plant to be guided remotely by the experts that are not present on site. Or, or even better, allowing them to identify issues quicker and easier and even potentially solve it themselves rather than having to call on the expert as well. In addition to this, you know, because this workforce has been asked to do perhaps more, uh, the need to digitize standard operating procedures so that people can learn new activities due to perhaps the unforeseen absence of a colleague, uh, or, or, or even if they're given new additional extensions to the responsibilities within a plant, uh, this has got to be done in an efficient and easy way for the operators to quickly learn and, and to learn wherever possible from best practice within the business and not to learn anew every time. So again, going back to that example of the tablets that we're giving them for, for augmented reality, if, if these same tablets can be used to provide access to the learning and support tools, the knowledge management, and, and all of their aids digitized, uh, this will allow us to start to empower the workforce. And, and we've got examples where we've utilized tools like those provided by our partner, Polka, uh, integrated with our augmented reality tools uh, and, and, and enhanced with the rich context-based data we get from tools like Aviva Insight. Uh, this enables the operators with, with levels of intelligence which can increase their responsiveness, their effectiveness, and, and ultimately their value add to their production processes as well. Um, adding on top of this, when you have these tools, you're using these tools and the ability they have to 
socially collaborate yeah, in that same tool. And um, you know, it allows this, the operator to, to remotely collaborate or to have asset chats, uh, to, to call an expert and do it all digitally. So high value add for the operators going forward. And, and we've seen this even pre-COVID uh, companies were investing in this, but we're quickly seeing companies are embracing this technology more and more. They're adopting this approach. Uh, it's already seeing a positive change in the way the workforce needs to collaborate in this new this new working environment that we've been faced with. Thank you, Mike. Vicky, as Mike mentioned, supply chains have been disrupted with an impact on industrial performance. In this environment, how can visibility to operations be better linked to supply chain visibility? If there's a change in an upstream supplier or a rapid change in the SKUs being ordered, production plants need to be flexible and agile to adapt. We do know that this crisis has put a whole new emphasis on flexibility and agility. The companies that are showing flexibility in both their business and operational models seem to be better positioned to weather this storm. Those that invested in technology prior to COVID are fortunate. Software brings valuable capabilities in areas like batch and recipe management. Companies can quickly reformulate products if materials change or even introduce new recipes. Examples like um, the peaks on certain products and the demands changing and a shift to new sanitization products. For changeover for different SKUs, those invested in automated packing, packaging lines with robotics can simplify and accelerate the time needed to change between products. Manufacturers can't suddenly do a switch from supplying to the on-trade to the off-trade because the way the product is packaged, the way it's put into cartons and distributed to retailers, you can't just change that overnight. They usually don't have the flexibility in their sh supply chains to do it. It's a really big problem. Basically, there's a clear divide between the two, on-trade, off-trade. They don't really overlap very well at all because of the way the plants are set up. Of course, having a finished product but no end market is also a big challenge. So ensuring stock and inventory is being dynamically managed and capable of being sold through multiple channels is vital to prevent enormous losses across the value chain. Thanks, Vicky. Mike, it may seem uh, that changes that the manufacturers are undergoing are just for temporary reasons, like the COVID virus, for example. But somehow these manufacturers have to figure out how to make their investment work for them in the long term. Mike, I have several questions for you. First, how can the manufacturers accelerate the rate of change within their organizations and where should they prioritize their digitization efforts? And second, how can they ramp up for this temporary situation and then have it actually create payback for them when they evolve to a more normal situation? Well, well, Dennis, I think as as we know, it's uh, within food and beverage, especially, it's a it's a slow changing industry. Uh, I, I think we've seen the gradual adoption of Industry 4.0 digitization into production processes and across the value chain, but it's been a slow slow change has been happening. Uh, when you look at life science, I think it's fair to say it's even slower uh, or, or sometimes even resistant to change. Uh, and this is often due to the regulatory requirements that they're faced with. Uh, but with the volatility that we're seeing combined with the new demands, like for example, in life science, uh, the need for a vaccine within 12 months rather than a traditional five to 10 year process, it's obvious that you know, the, the, we need to accelerate in many areas across the value chain. We need to digitize across the value chain to, to, to accelerate and, and to support this, this change that, that unfortunately COVID has, is going to force upon us all. Um, the challenge is going to be that, I think, Dennis, every country, every company, and even every plant uh, may have a different focus or a starting point yeah, because of the different needs within countries, different governments, as well as the different way that companies operate. Some may focus on production areas and how to automate them further to, to help refocus the workforce, but also to, to, to digitize the workforce to make them more empowered. That may be a starting point for some people. You know, other people, other companies may, may put systems in place to enable quicker response to changes in the supply chain, like, like Vicky was mentioning before. Uh, solutions that will enable quicker reformulation or, or formulation of, of new products based upon market demands changing 
or, or uh, raw material availability if it suddenly changes as well in the upstream side of the supply chain. And um, we may also see some some even wilder steps that may happen within within the segments. Uh, where we see may, may see some companies moving away from global manufacturing to be more localized with their manufacturing and leveraging these local supply chains to satisfy these plants as well. But I think one thing that is certain is that there's going to be a, a far tighter integration with digitization horizontally across that value chain so that when they start to do these implementation, they want to make sure that they can start to integrate with each other horizontally across the value chain so that when there's an impact in one area of that value chain, no matter where it is, it's a controllable ripple effect that you start to see either side of it and allowing the manufacturers then to respond to it in a controlled manner rather than the chaos that we've seen with some companies, you know, when, when COVID uh, came along uh, with the changes both upstream and downstream within the supply chain. Um, so digitization you know, is going to make a lot of sense because it's going to provide this needed flexibility, the agility, and, and also the visibility that companies are going to need across the supply chain. It, but the problem is going to be as there's less money to spend on investments, uh, they can't be capital intensive. Uh, and it must be a strong return on investment to get the benefit from these as well. So investments will need to be selective. Uh, and they'll, they're going to require due consideration on on deciding where then to digitize within the operations. Um, looking at areas like how we mature as the installation or, or situations where workers need to be empowered in different ways, uh, situations where faster decision making is going to be required or, or must be enabled or, or perhaps even eliminated uh, by using advanced technology to predict and adapt autonomously. But the ultimate goal is going to be fast deployment of this technology and making sure you get that quick return on investment. And, and I think this is where, in many cases, we're going to see software and services are going to help. They're going to help overcome some of these capital restrictions that we're going to see. Uh, and they're going to help provide better remote visibility into the operations and help with this downtime avoidance. So digital services will enable this. It will be a transition for these investments and will help move from CapEx to OpEx. It's going to lower the threshold uh, to make these investments, uh, incremental investments that will allow you to quickly impact your business. And because these are digital services, it gives you a good, uh, easy way to, to build capacity, capacity and to adapt to the volume and scale of support that you need incrementally across your business. So, so no longer is the big bang needed. Instead, the utilization of industrial software and associated services is going to empower this digital transformation in a far more sustainable manner as well going forward. And, and finally, maybe to add to this, um, I mentioned before, implementing this is, is not only going to be horizontally across the business, as, as we believe is where the value is going to mainly come from, uh, but we can't forget vertically as well. And it's about going from the IT domains all the way down into the OT domains, down into manufacturing, onto the equipment. Uh, because it's only when we get this real-time visibility to allow us to do real-time control, to adapt with the flexibility in the production processes, to cope quickly and fully with the variability in volumes and production mixes, is, is, is digitization going to be successful for manufacturers? Mike, thank you for those insights. Vicky, can you share some of the ways Schneider Electric itself, as a global manufacturer, has adapted to this situation? We are manufacturers as well. We are facing those challenges too, and we had to invent new ways of operating. Schneider Electric's global supply chain covers over 40 countries and almost 300 factories and logistics centres. Our factories in all regions of the world have consistent production processes, job settings, production languages and management structures, so they are highly replicable. Prior to the epidemic, Schneider Electric had already had a responsive supply chain, global linkages uh, and a comprehensive upstream and downstream collaboration. And this has helped us to respond to the current challenges in a much more agile manner and continue to deliver on core business priorities. When a major public emergency occurs in any area, we can seamlessly balance global resources instead of a region alone. We've been working on our tailored sustainable and connected for supply chain program for many years now. Digitization is bringing to our supply chain more visibility, more anticipation, more flexibility and agility, which is even more valuable in current times. 
This is the key to optimise. But we've also been able to learn to do more things remotely to cope with travel freeze, developing new ways of working, less on site travel, but more time on value added support to our customer based on data collected. We have fully leveraged our end to end planning and digital execution tools, which reveal to be critical for visibility and scenario simulations to holistically improve the performance and reduce the cost of the plant and allow us to take the best decision using simulation and modelling. From site by site to integrated company management, we have used digital and cloud solutions to ensure our end-to-end supply chain is on and responding to our customers. Our obsession has been to maintain supply chain operations, especially for critical infrastructure, hospitals, utilities, data centres, cold chains, to help our suppliers to restart operations and to increase speed and level of collaboration and support our customers in their business continuity. We were fortunate to have invested into our plants with our technologies and that of our partners and having one of the best supply chains in the world, meaning we've been able to respond in a relatively controlled manner to this global crisis. Well, thank you, Vicky. Well, Mike and Vicky, uh, both of you have given us a lot to think about. Uh, Do you have any final message for our audience? Yeah, thank you, Dennis. Maybe if I start and then then hand it over to Vicky. Uh, I think we, uh, Schneider Electric, we're in a good position because of the strategy we have. We're, we're very focused on sustainability, but also digitization. You know, they, for us, they go hand in hand. Uh, so we think we've built up the right portfolio, uh, no matter what may come in the future. The, the, the challenge is going, to, is going to be we simply just do not know what is going to be used for in the future to solve the problems because we just don't know what the problems are going to be yet. Uh, that's why right now inside Schneider, we're, we're really focusing a vast majority of our energy on listening to our customers, watching the markets uh, and trying to understand what we think could be coming. Um, and then to articulate you know, uh, ourselves and address what their, their new and changing requirements may be as, as they start to emerge in the future. Ready? If there is an existing solution to fix an issue, now it is critical not to spend money and time reinventing the wheel. And if it is something that needs a complete new approach, we may need completely different types of partners to solve it. Yeah, and I think, Vicky, just to add to that, I think the challenge we've got, we we simply do not know what's around the corner yet. We just know one simple fact, and that is it's going to be different to what it was before. Right. Okay, fascinating stuff. Well, thanks to all of you for attending today. Have a safe and rewarding day. Thank you. Bye.